Today, I'm going to talk about AI in MR as well as the MR advances. So I will get in deep with MR fingerprinting in my following slides. So we were the first to introduce the biometric systems, which will lead you through a process of robotness and quantification in the precision medicine. So in biometrics technology, we have something called select and go interface. So you can do MR examination in a tablet based workflow. Yes, that is still coming. That is still a work in progress. So how you are operating your mobile? Similarly, we give you a tablet that is called the Scandroid. So we call it as Android for our mobile phones, but we call it as Scandroid. So any biometric scanners can be operated via tab. So tablet, so no need to go and sit in front of the console. Just take the tablet, which is given by the Siemens engineers, and you can start doing any examinations in a 7-inch or a 15-inch tablet, whichever you wish. So what is the benefit? So the more patient interaction time, the patient is comfortable. So now what we are doing, we are instructing the patient, we are telling the patient to stand inside, or we are telling, telling the patient to lie down on the bed, and we are starting the examination. Now the era has changed because of artificial intelligence. The scan work, tablet workflow will help you to stand inside the magnet room and do the scan near the patient as well. And with the MR fingerprinting, so I'm not discouraging anyone here because of artificial intelligence. It, it will not change the way how the human is going to work. It is going to just assist the human beings. It is not going to take your jobs off. It is not going to take the radiologist jobs off. It is not like that. It is going to assist you. So after MR fingerprinting, what happens? So as I told, MR fingerprinting is nothing but it is going to give you a qualitative data. Once the MR fingerprinting is done, the system is going to do the reporting for you. So you can just take the printout and you can send it to your concerned radiologist and you can cross verify it. So that is the way forward in artificial intelligence. And what we have, so we have AI powered guidance and workflow. For example, as I told dot dot engine, so it is nothing but without the help of a technologist, the system can do the scans individually, but we need a technologist who is going to guide the system. So it is not going to take over the technologist, but a technologist will now become the in charge. And it has a tablet workflow, as I told, for accurate positioning, as well as the accurate scanning. It has a tablet based workflow. So you position the patient, you tell you have to do a brain scan, you click on the brain. So the system is going to do the auto positioning for you. Previously, what we used to do, we have to position the patient on table, we have to move it inch by inch, we have to switch on the laser light, we have to center on the coil or else the anatomical region. But now everything is automated because of artificial intelligence. Then we have automated procedure planning for prostate examination. So for prostate examination, for any radiotherapy planning, the system can give you proper guidance as well as the accurate volume of the prostate with the help of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So now I'll jump into my second topic that is MR fingerprinting. So MR fingerprinting is way forward. So we are the only vendor who has MR fingerprinting available in the market till date. So what is MR fingerprinting? It is a new frontier where, so the magnetic resonance diagnostic is at the frontier of a paradigm shift. So you are going to see the paradigm shift from now onwards. So MR fingerprinting was launched officially in 2019. So it is coming in the market from June. So what it is going to do, it is going to digitalize your healthcare. So that is for sure. So MR fingerprinting makes it possible to 
Glenn quantitative information for scans that enables decision based on digital tissue data. Okay, so with the help of the data which is collected from a human being is going to get into a dictionary and it is going to match up with the dictionary. Then you are going to get the quantitative data which is going to be very helpful in the diagnosis of patient. So what is actually fingerprinting? It's about writing the next chapter in MR. I'm telling you, you are going to be mesmerized by this technology where no one can take over it. So we are not going to collect any images. We are going to collect information. So how this information is going to get collected? It is by a elliptical spiral mode. So that is a deep physics. I will tell you what is the physics behind it, but it is going to collect information. It is not going to collect any images. So images in MR are T1, T2, flare or anything, but we are going to collect information. How we are going to collect information? So that is the most interesting part in MR fingerprinting. And is my result robust? Yes, you can trust the data, whatever you are going to get. It is going to be a reproducible result. It can be coming from any scanners within the organization. For example, it will be possible only with the Siemens scanners as of now. In the near future, yes, if any vendor who is bringing up a same similar technology, that will also be possible for quantification. So what is MR fingerprinting? It uses a quantitative information to generate a more precise understanding of patient condition rather than patient information, okay? It is going to give you a quantification data of the patient condition. So quantitative MRF offers enormous potential to improve tissue differentiation and enable less invasive diagnosis. Now, what we are doing is each and every sequence we are having a look on it, okay? So always it is about seeing. We are seeing where is the lesion. What is the difference between a T1-weighted lesion and a T2-weighted lesion? So what is the characteristics? So this is what we see now. But I'm telling you, close your eyes. The system will do it for you. That is MR fingerprinting. So here, I have a sagittal T1 weighted image. In the left frontal, you can see a hypodense lesion. So, now what we will do, this is a conventional method, correct? So, we have a sagittal T1 weighted image. So, this is a left side image where it shows the left frontal has lesion. So, this is going to give the basic structure. So, the structure is unchanged. This is a T2 weighted image. The T2 weighted image shows the left frontotemporal region has a hyperintense signal, so which is causing the deviation of the midline, the brain towards right. So this is how a radiologist or a radiographer sees an image. So now they will think, so what will be the possibility of a disease? Yes. Next, so what is the severity? Is there any extension? Is it a low grade or a high grade or it is a type 1 lesion or a type 2 lesion? Yes. So then they have come up with a conclusion called glioma. Now they have found it is a glioma. Now they have to differentiate the grade. For this, we need additional sequences. Correct? So they have found it is a glioma. Now for grading, what they are going to do? For infiltration, the type of infiltration. So, what is the next step? Yes, we have to add up multiple sequence. So, what is the prognosis? Yes, I found whether it is a low grade or a high grade. Then I found infiltration areas and I'm going to give the prognosis. Next, what I'm going to do or what a radiologist or a neurosurgeon is going to do? They are going to go for a stereotactic brain biopsy that is going to be quantitative. So, biopsy is 
biopsies were previously the gold standard for quantification of any tissues, correct? So any tissues can be taken and kept under a microscope and it can be told what type of tissue it is, what is the grade, what is the infiltration, what will be the prognosis. But every biopsy is a failed imaging procedure. Okay, so every biopsy is a failed imaging procedure, especially for brain. Now what I'm going to do? So always I get a mixture of weighting tissue properties. Okay, so I'm going to do a T1 weighted image, T2 weighted image, a diffusion weighted image and a perfusion weighted image. It totally depends on the parameter, the system parameter. For example, you might have three different technologists who are sitting on in front of the scanner. One might be a senior radiographer, one might be a mid-level, one might be a junior radiographer. Everyone has their way of understanding the parameters. So everyone, everyone's intention sometimes will be for reducing scan time. Whenever you reduce scan time, it is mainly on the parameters what you are going to do. So now we are going to get a qualitative data. So for example, a technologist who is sitting in front of a scanner has a patient for a brain examination. He does the position, he comes inside, he runs a diffusion weighted image, he runs a T1 weighted image, T2 weighted image, followed by a flare. And if he finds any lesion, he will go for a post-contrast perfusion imaging followed by the post-contrast sequence. And the scan time totally depends on the technologist who is sitting and it totally depends on the patient's cooperation. For example, if the patient is cooperative and if the technologist gives a good scan time, still it is a qualitative data. No, I can't quantify. So still the radiologist has to have multiple MR contrast to see what type of tumor it is. So basically, what, what do we mean by quantification? In our part of daily life, quantification is there everywhere. So previously, we used to get our So previously, we used to get all our blood pressures with a BP monitor. Now, we made it digital, okay? So we can now see all the breast pressure, we can see heart rate, we can see pulse, everything in our Apple Watch or Android Watch or anything. So everything is being digital or we can track it in our day-to-day -day life. So why not talk, taking the next step on revolution, revolutionizing MR, we make it more quantitative. Yes, in MR, the most prominent influence of the signal comes from a T1 and a T2 weighted image. We have an impact with a T2 star imaging or the T2 DK. For example, each and every magnet has a different homogeneity. So when we talk about homogeneity, so each and everything is going to be different. So we are going to mainly concentrate on the T1 relaxation as well as the T2 DK, which is going to happen in a normal MR. We are going to omit the T2 star based acquisition. So these are the most promising signals which we are going to get in MR. So with the help of T1 relaxation and T2 DK, we are going to get T1 maps as well as T2 maps with the help of machine learning. So the MR fingerprinting comes with a T1 map and a T2 map. This can be used for quantification. So how does it help for quantification of a tumor? So it is going to differentiate between a healthy as well as a unhealthy tissue, which is going to be very useful in diagnosis. It is not only useful for diagnosis as well as for the follow-up therapies or the prognosis of the patient. It is very useful when we give a quantified data. Now, whenever the patient comes with a follow-up examination, it is useful for comparison of 
the older examination. This is what the system is going to do for you. So, MR fingerprinting gives you the diagnosis. It is going to help you in therapy and it is going to help you in the follow-up of the patient. So, how much is the treatment response after follow-up? Now, it is all about quantification. Go in front of the scanner, close your eyes, just run a fingerprinting sequence. It is going to collect all the information rather than collecting the images like T1, T2, layer, DTI, DWI or perfusion. So it is a quantitative multi-parametric data. It is going to acquire simultaneously. So this is an example of a clinical study. So what can MRF contribute to tissue characterization? Here it is a case of low-grade astrocytoma. So here you can see on your left side you have a T2 weighted flare with a fat saturation. You can see the difference in the signal intensity in the high parietal region that is on the right side. The MR Fingerprinting T1 maps and T2 maps gives you the quantitative analysis. With the help of quantitative analysis, the system is going to give you various parameters. So with the help of the, those parameters, the radiologist will be help the radiologist will be reporting it as a low grade astrocytoma. So how is this possible? So we have a tool which is embedded on the scanner for MR fingerprinting. So once the data is done or the data acquisition is done, just load the data into a, the fingerprinting software that is called the root. So just draw ROI on the normal tissue, abnormal tissue and the bone as well if you want. Then the system is going to give the tissue characterization of the normal tissue, the edematous tissue, as well as the tumor tissue. According to the various rate of relaxation, the system is going to give this types of information automatically. So, I have come to my last slide. So, basically you should understand, so the rapid collection of the fingerprinting with a special MRF data acquisition. So usually we do a Cartesian based acquisition or a spiral based acquisition or a radial based acquisition in our normal MR. But how does this fingerprinting acquisition look like? It is a, it is also a similar spiral based acquisition. It is a rapid spiral based acquisition and you are going to get the quantification data with the help of the dictionaries which is already stored on the computer or that the data sets are already stored, it is going to match the data what you got with the dictionaries behind and it is going to give you a quantitative analysis as well as the result which is very useful for the patient. This is all because of machine learning as well as the artificial intelligence. So this is a data acquisition scheme, how it happens in the case space. So this is the example of a rapid spiral acquisition which is happening in the case space. You can see the sound is entirely different. It is like a motor. So it is going to do spiral acquisition starting from the center of the case space until the periphery. So whatever the changes the technologist or the radiographer makes, the system automatically adapts to the condition. So any changes made will not have impact on the end result. So this is because of artificial intelligence. So thank you so much for your patience.